Hey everyone, it's Tammy from SketchUp for Interior Designers, and I recently got asked how I would draw a coffered ceiling in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and dig in to how I would go about doing that. Here I've already drawn a simple room. It's got a floor and some walls in SketchUp, and it's really important that these walls are already part of a group. They are all grouped together. I don't want these to stick to my coffered ceiling, so make sure you've got that a part of a group. I also have a simple fireplace here, just the shape of a fireplace, and that as well uh, is also grouped. So um, these are all you know separate from each other, and uh, yeah, we're ready to get started. So I'm leaving the ceiling off for now so that it doesn't get in my way. If you already have a ceiling on here, you can just go ahead and put that on a layer and turn that layer off so it's out of your way. So the first thing I'm going to do is go about um, building the beams. So I'm going to use components here pretty heavily um, because we're going to be making multiples of the same thing. So I'm going to get a rectangle and I'm going to draw a six by six square. So six comma six. And I'm going to go ahead and make that into a component. So I selected the face, hit the letter G, and I'm going to call this beam one. Create. And now I can double click into that and go ahead and pull it all the way to infer to the end of the space. I'm going to click off of that and I'll go ahead and create some copies. So using my move tool, it's really easy. I don't need to do the math. I'm just going to create an array. So I'm going to hit my option or control key on a PC and set that down at the opposite end. And this one is going to have five total. So I want to make four copies. So I'm going to hit uh, four forward slash enter and that's going to create um, four total copies but it's going to put the copies in the middle of the first copy and the original so again I use the move tool plus option or control and then I did four forward slash all right so now anytime I alter one of these beams of course these will also um, be altered because of the component all right, so now that I've built out these, I need to do the cross section here. I don't really like it when my geometry crosses into itself. Um, and I'll show you what I mean here. I don't really want this to run right through here. I don't know, it kind of bothers me. So I'm just gonna make shorter beams and I'm gonna measure this out. Again, I'll make it a six by six, so six comma six. And I'm going to make this into a component again. So the letter G, and I'm going to call this beam two, or you can call it short beam or whatever you want to call it. All right, and then I'll go ahead and edit that and extrude it just to this point. So this is going to be our short set of beams here. All right, I'm done with that. It's its own component. And I'm going to go ahead and create another array. So I'm using the move tool and I'm really strategic about where I grab this with that array, that move plus option or control, and I'm going to set it down right here. I was strategic about it because I grabbed it in the corner so that I could line it up with this corner here. Set it down, and now I'm going to type 3x enter, and that will create three total copies of the original. So one, two, three. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and select these guys and use my move tool plus option or control again and set it down over here and I'm going to do forward slash four I think that was right let's see one two three four five yep okay so now I have a grid of five this way and five this way all right so I'm happy with that and I've got the makings of a coffered ceiling kind of started here but I want to give it a little bit of definition before I add on that ceiling and start to add some textures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a profile. I sometimes will often just go to the 3D warehouse to find a profile um, for some molding, but I'm just going to go ahead and create this one because I think it's pretty simple. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure it out. I'm going to do half of an inch. I'm going to make myself a little grid. I love to measure things out first beforehand. I know not everybody does. And I'm just gonna make these little scalloped, um, a little scalloped shape right here. So I've measured out a um, half inch grid here to be a full inch total. And I'm gonna get the arc tool, click and release, and 
click and release here. I'm just gonna eyeball it. And I'm going from intersection to intersection. And that looks good. I need to complete the shape, so I'll get my line tool. And I'm looking for this face here. All right, so now I am going to go ahead and move this guy over here a little bit. And I think I'll go to the top, get rid of those guidelines. All right. So now all I have to do is select this face here. I drew a rectangle over the top of this open area. I'm going to go ahead and select the face, and now I'm going to use the Follow Me tool. So under Tools, I've got, let's see, where'd you go? Follow Me. And because I had selected this face, it's going to follow the path around that face. So I clicked and released on that, um, that little profile there, and I've created um, this nice little scalloped shape. I'm going to delete this shape here, that face, and now I'm left with this. And I don't want to leave this loose, so I'm going to double click, or excuse me, triple click, and I'm going to make this into a component as well. So G, and I'm going to call this molding, enter. And now I would also like the molding to be on this side as well. So again, using my move tool, plus option, I'm going to move this down, but it's upside down. So what I'm going to do is right click, flip along, components blue. And that's just going to mirror itself right along the blue axis. Okay, so that looks good, except it's hollow. So what I need to do is I need to draw some lines here from endpoint to endpoint and see if I can heal that. And that worked. I just um, I don't need this middle face. So let's see if I can kind of zhush it a little bit. All right, whoop, sorry about that. Hmm. Doesn't always go smoothly according to plan, but that's fine, that worked right there. And now we've got a face that is reversed, so let's go ahead and reverse that so that it's correctly oriented. And now we're gonna get out of that component there and it should be the same on both sides. Okay, now we've added some detail. I'm happy with that. And I actually probably should have built it over here. I'm gonna go ahead and group these two guys together. I used the select tool um, plus while holding down shift, I added both of these to the selection. I'm gonna go ahead and group that so that it moves as one. And I'm gonna move this right over here so that now I can create an array. Okay, and now these walls are starting to get in my way. I can either um, go to the top here, or I can turn off these layers. I put my walls on a layer and the fireplace on a layer just because I knew it was probably gonna get in my way. So I can do that. I can hit Command-1 just to go up to the top here, um, if you're on a Mac, of course. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this out. We're gonna use the Move plus Option again and I'm gonna hit X3 or 3X. All right, so now, whoop, we don't need that. Just need these guys, and we're gonna continue on with this array maker here, and then again, 3X. All right, so now we've got some good looking detail in there, and I'd like to go ahead and add in a texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new texture. And I have a collection of textures here. I'm gonna go ahead and just use one of these wood textures and press okay. And now I've got it in my model. Um, now it's really important to not just paint these from the outside. I know it's really tempting to just click around and paint these, but um, that's not good. As you can see, as I'm painting them, not all of them are changing along with the changed component. So what I need to do is undo that and get my select tool and double click into each component so that I have access to the faces. So now I can hold down my shift key, whoop, hold down my shift key, there we go, to paint the whole thing. All right, I'm gonna get out of that, do the same thing for these guys, as well as these guys. Make sure that you're double-clicked into the group or component. 
and I can't shouldn't pre-select these. There we go. Hold down shift and I can paint the entire group there. All right, so that is looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and bring back my walls and my fireplace. And I'm happy with that. I can draw a rectangle over this ceiling area. Pull that up a little. Triple click, make sure that it's grouped so that it does have that protective barrier, doesn't stick to anything else. All right, that's looking great. Um, one last thing, I'll turn on the shadows on and off here so you can kind of see, but um, one last thing, I don't really want these edges here. So what I'm gonna do is, it's easier to see in monochrome, so let's go ahead and do that. But what I would like to do is hide some of these edges. So I'm gonna double click into each component and use the um, eraser plus shift holding down shift while I click the eraser there to hide some of this. Whoop. Make sure you have access to that. To hide some of this line work here because I want it to look nice and smooth just like that. So it looks like one full beam without all of those extra edges in there. You can kind of focus on the detail that's going on inside of here. All right, so now we can go back to our shaded with textures and continue to work on our model.